Welcome to What the Fact. Today's topic is this guy. Elmer McCurdy was a train robin son of a gun. Born in Washington, Maine, yes, there's a city named Washington in the state of Maine. In 1880, he never knew his father and was raised by his uncle and his wife. When he was 10, the man he thought was his father died, and eventually, he was told the truth about who his mother was. This led the teenage Elmer into a downward spiral of alcoholism and bad behavior that he carried with him for the rest of his life. He went on to live with his grandfather, but in 1990, his biological mother and his grandfather died within a month of each other. Elmer was about as alone as you can possibly get, and so he ended up wandering around the Kansas City area, and through an odd series of events wound up a train robber who specialized in using nitroglycerin. As interesting and tumultuous as Elmer's life was, that is nothing compared with the wacky adventures his corpse would go on with after his death. In 1911, three sheriffs gunned McCurdy down in a barn near Bartlesville, Oklahoma. McCurdy was embalmed and dressed up for a funeral service, but nobody ever claimed the body, seeing as how McCurdy had no living relatives that were known of. The Undertaker decided not to let a good, dead body go to waste, and propped McCurdy up on display as the bandit who wouldn't give up, and charged a nickel for anyone to take their picture with him. This exploitation went on for five horrible years, before a man claimed to be McCurdy's long-lost brother from California, he wasn't, put him on a train headed for San Francisco. Except, that's not what happened. They sent him to Arkansas City, Kansas instead. Can we just stop here for a second to point out that we have a Washington, Maine, Kansas City, Missouri, and an Arkansas City, Kansas. That is so confusing. The man who took Elmer's body was the owner of a traveling carnival, and they basically stole the Undertaker's idea and put McCurdy on display as the outlaw who would never be captured alive. That went on for about six years until his body changed hands again and was used as part of a museum of crime, where it was put on display next to wax figurines of Jesse James, Bill Doolin, and other more well-known and successful bandits. Then his body was used as a prop to promote a film called Narcotic, which was supposed to scare people away from drugs. This was in 1933. McCurdy had been dead for 22 years. Eventually, in 1949, McCurdy's body was placed in a warehouse in Los Angeles. In 1964, McCurdy's body was lent as a prop for the movie She Freak, which debuted in 1967. Here's a screenshot from that movie. Yeah, bet you wish you hadn't seen that. This movie is free on YouTube, and the opening credits say, The motion picture you are about to see is wholly fictional, and any resemblance herein to actual happenings and or actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. What does that mean? The filmmakers knew, for a fact, that there was a dead body used as a prop in this movie, and they say it's purely coincidental that he looks dead? Anyways, McCurdy's body kept being used for odd jobs here and there, and at some point he was coated with a layer of wax and paint to make himself look presentable. He had traded hands so many times that nobody knew he wasn't a mannequin, but a dead body anymore. In 1968, he was sold with a bunch of other wax figures to a guy named Spoonie, owner of the Long Beach Hollywood Wax Museum. While there, he was loaned for a show at Mount Rushmore, because why the hell not at this point? During the filming of the TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man, a prop specialist tried to move McCurdy's body, which was hanging from a gallows, and his arm snapped off. Upon seeing bones and flesh inside the broken arm, the police were called. The year was 1976, 65 years after he was shot dead. Finally, in 1977, McCurdy was shipped back to Oklahoma where he's buried near the town of Guthrie. If you haven't already, click on the link in the description for this video to visit my Patreon page, or just go to patreon.com slash planetpeterson. 
Your support allows me to keep making videos and improves this channel in so many ways. You can contribute for as little as 10 cents a day. There are added benefits to being a Patreon member, including suggesting topics for future videos, early access to videos, and more. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel and hit the bell so you can be notified when new videos come out. That way you can be one of the very first to view and comment on the video, which makes it way more likely that I will see your comment and be able to respond to you. You can also find me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter by searching Planet Peterson. I'll see you next time.